Appreciate you all being here today. I know it's a busy weekend. It's a, it's a weekend that we all stay pretty busy and lots of people are out and about today. But also we have lots of people tuning in with us today and I'm excited about that. Um, you know, can I, can I just share with you that the last few weeks have been pretty crazy? Yeah, yeah, quite honestly, it's just, it just keeps getting funner and funner. Um, you know, uh, about 13 days ago, we uh, were made aware that Pastor Aaron and Pastor Dave were both exposed to uh, an individual who had COVID. And so that put them on a 14-day quarantine. And uh, so they're actually doing very well. I'm glad to report that everybody's healthy. Everybody's fine. Yes, amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. They're doing well, and um, they are due to be back here probably tomorrow or Tuesday. And so um, I'm going to be glad to have them back here. Um, so we were working on this week. We, we, we found out very late last week, and it, it just caused us, there was just not an option other than to go back online. And so um, this week we were planning and we were preparing. And, and you know that old devil, he just has to throw a little monkey wrench in anytime he can. So our poor little Micah came down sick. And so that took him out. So we have just absolutely been grateful that we have depths of talent in this church. You know what I mean? Honestly. We have such talented people here that are able to step in and do what they need to do. And then, um, you know, the depth of our leadership. However, today, if I would have gone down, I don't know, I, I guess we would have taken volunteers. So be thankful that I'm in a good shape today. Well, maybe you don't want to be thankful for that. I'm not so sure. But, uh, but you know what? It's been, um, it's been interesting, to say the least. And um, today, as we're talking about our road trip, I told Pastor Aaron, I said, I, I, can, I can flow with road trip today, because I just feel like we have been on one long road trip lately. But um, so, you know, on Facebook and stuff, you see these little memes that are just like little cartoony things every once in a while. Well, this is my favorite cartoon, if 2020 were a bag of chips. They would be flavored orange juice and toothpaste. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> I tell you what, that is so true. And um, so we've seen, I've seen lots of them, but like I say, that is my favorite one because, you know, there is nothing worse than brushing your teeth and then going to take it a drink of orange juice. So we have been through it. And, you know, the other day I was listening to a newscast and this doctor used this term COVID exhausted. And I was like, I'm COVID exhausted. I'm officially COVID exhausted. How about you? Are you tired of COVID? Are you physically tired of COVID? So COVID exhausted is what we are um, for right now. But do you know what? If COVID, if 2020 had a road sign, I believe this would be the road sign for 2020. You agree? Yeah. See, the definition of detour is to make someone or something go in a direction that is not planned or expected. We didn't expect any of this, did we? When thank, I sure hope nobody planned it. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, we are on a major detour. And as I thought about that, and I would say that detour on a road trip is never something that you plan or expect. I don't know about you, but I usually find a detour to be frustrating. When you come upon, you're traveling, you're on your way, and, some, and you see this big sign that says detour ahead. It can be so frustrating because you usually end up on this little two-lane road going through this community that you don't even know, and you're trying to seek, find your way to get back to where you wanted to be, right? So they can be frustrating. Another thing about a detour is it slows you down. It slows you down. It adds miles to your trip. I, I don't know about you, but I think every street in Lancaster right now is being worked on. And I'm not kidding you. I can just want to go across town. I have my route that I take, 
It's pretty plain. It's pretty simple. And lo and behold, I've got to go three blocks out of my way, right? So they slow you down. They slow you down. And detours sometimes don't make sense, and they make you question. Where are you, and where are you going? Today on our road trip, I want you to join me as we look at a detour that was created by God. Travel with me, if you will, to the road to Damascus. Acts 9, 1 through 9. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priests and asked them for letters to the synagogues in Damascus so that he found... so. If he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul said. Saul asked. I am Jesus whom you are persecuting he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but they didn't see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but he opened his eyes, and he could not see. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything." So we're on the road to Damascus today. This is the road to Damascus. It was just basically a road that led from Jerusalem to the city of Damascus. It would have been 135 miles that Saul traveled at that point in time to get to the city of Damascus. And um, if we look at all that was happening in Saul's life at that point, we might understand why God decided to detour him. First of all, Saul grew up in Jerusalem. He studied under the rabbi Gamaliel, was was present at the trial of Stephen. The Bible tells us that the persecutors and the executors of Stephen actually laid their garments at the feet of Saul. He ravaged churches and homes of believers and arrested both men and women who proclaimed to be followers of Christ. Saul was not on a good road. It was time for God to detour him, right? Would you all agree? Yeah, he could have wreaked havoc into the expansion of the church. But God decides to detour him. And I I think no wonder God detoured Saul. No wonder he did. But what about us? Why does God allow us to experience detours in our lives? I'm not out persecuting Christians. I'm not. I'm, I'm doing the work of the Lord, as a matter of fact. And yet, sometimes I get caught up in a detour Detours come in many forms, don't they? Um, A job loss, a detour. A detour of infidelity in your marriage. A detour of a cancer diagnosis. A detour of a child addicted to drugs. A life-changing accident. A marriage in crisis the passing of a loved one, legal issues, COVID-19. You know, I got to thinking about detours, and and I've got some significant ones in my life that I remember. Um, One of the detours that I remember was a third child. I had two beautiful little girls. I was quite content. I was happy to have two beautiful little girls. 
One was just about out of diapers, ready to go. You know, we were, we were set. I was going to go back to school. Um, I lost the 25 pounds of baby weight. I mean, I was ready to be done with children. And lo and behold, here comes number three. It was quite a detour for me. <laughs> it really kind of rocked my world. I was not planning on it. I was not heading that direction. As a matter of fact, I was turning opposite of that direction. But God decided to give me a third child. One other time, I remember a significant detour in our lives was Mike and I had been in Circleville. We'd lived in Circleville for a while, and then um, we had always grown up in this church went to Circleville for a while, and we wanted to get back to this church. And so we started coming back here, and we were driving back and forth from Circleville about three times a week just to go to church. And uh, we were like, man, we love Lancaster. We just want to be in Lancaster. Let's just, uh, we just want to be in Lancaster. So we bought a home in Circleville. So we decided that at that point in time, the housing market was terrible. It was not good. And so we decided that we would, we would keep our home in Circleville because we didn't think we could sell it at that time, and we would get a home over here. And so we looked around, and we tried to find something, and needless to say, the housing market was not great. We were not in a great place. So we decided to get a house on land contract, and we found a couple that wanted to sell their house. We're having some challenges. So we decided we'd, we'd do the land contract. We put a bunch of money down. We started paying for the house, all these kinds of things. And about 12 months into it, Mike's company closed. And Mike was out of a job. The job market was not good at that time either. <laughs> so here we were with an obligation that we could not fulfill. And we ended up having to walk away from that house and that investment. And it was a detour I just really didn't quite understand at the time. So when detours happen, they can suddenly shift our direction. They can change our thinking. And sometimes... Nothing will be the same from that time forward. So how do we navigate a sudden detour? How do we get through this? Because see, it seems to me, I've been on detours before, and they always do end. I always get through them. They always end. When I'm driving, I always get to where I wanted to be. They end, but how do we navigate through them? How do we navigate through them? When you're on a detour, so much of what you are seeing and feeling is unfamiliar. So to get through a detour, you must trust the unfamiliar. It normally means you're going to go into, onto roads that you don't normally take or you've never taken. You might go through a community that you didn't even know existed. When you go through a life detour, you may be making changes that you have never had to make before. You might be feeling emotions that you never experienced. When we find ourselves in this unfamiliar place, we need to realize that we have this awesome, awesome God that goes before us. Amen? Amen. You may not know where you're going. You may not know how it's going to turn out. But you have a God that's going before us. If you look at Deuteronomy uh, you, in the book of Deuteronomy, we see a scripture that says, the Lord your God who is going before you will fight for you as he did for you in Egypt before your very eyes. Amen. Knowing that God is going before you when you are faced with a life detour is such a blessing. And you should know that God had, and Addie, I think about this, I think about our world right now. I think about this country. I think about where we're at right now. I don't know about you, but I am so grateful that I have a God that's in charge. I have a God that's in control. There is nothing going to get past him. There's nothing going to get past him. Detours very seldom lead us to a familiar place. We have to know that we can trust where we are going. And if we put our faith in Christ, we can know that we will not only get through the detour, but it could possibly change our lives forever. Looking back at Saul, he had to trust the unfamiliar. It was the unfamiliar voice. The Bible says he fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? 
Who are you, Lord? asked Saul. Saul didn't recognize this voice. You might recognize the things that are, being, that are happening around you. You might, rec- might not recognize where you're headed or what's going on. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you'll be told what you must do. Saul had to trust that voice that he didn't recognize. Sometimes when we're going through a detour, we can't even hear the voice. We can't even hear the voice. But you have to trust that it's there. And you have to listen intently. Saul did not know the voice of the Lord. God gives him specific details of what he must do. One of the things I think is interesting, do you think it's interesting that God took Saul's sight? You know, without sight, we become much more dependent on our other senses. Sometimes when I found it, we find ourselves having to trust the unfamiliar, we are going to have to go beyond what we see. You know, um, it's so easy to get caught up in what you see around you and forget to listen to the voice that you're putting your trust in. Finding the voice of God while you navigate your detour will be life-changing. I have to say that sometimes those detours that I've gone through just have actually allowed me to hone in my skills of hearing the voice of God. You know, every time we go through a trial, we go through a challenge, God is teaching us something. And sometimes what I've learned is listen to his voice. Listen to his voice. Isaiah says, although the Lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, your teachers will be hidden no more. With your own eyes, you will see them. Whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. God will show you the way. He will speak to you. It may be through a person, it may be through a situation, it may be through his word, but he will show you the way. This scripture assures us there is a voice that we can hear in our ears that will lead us and guide us. With my first detour, that unexpected pregnancy, you know, I'll never forget when I heard God's voice on that. And it was kind of, it it stuck with me, it stuck with me for a long time. But I was at my doctor's office, and I was noticeably upset. I was, you know, telling my doctor, I just didn't, I, I just can't believe this. I did all the right thing. I can't believe this, you know. And my doctor looked at me and he said, you know, Chris, you don't have to do this. We can take care of this. And while that was my doctor saying that, that might as well have been God sitting right there looking at me and saying to me, you're being selfish and you better get it together, girl. Because we weren't going there. There was no way we were going there tell you too, that doctor wasn't my doctor after that either. (laughs) But honestly, it was like a reality check hit. And I heard him say that. And I thought the Holy Spirit said to me, right. Yeah, this is not the end of the world. This is not your choice right now. Your choice right now is to accept this. And so I just want to tell you, that God will speak to you somehow. If you'll open your heart and your ears to listen, he'll speak to you somehow. The second thing you need to navigate a detour is you've got to watch for the signs. When you're driving and you encounter a detour, you will see the sign. You'll You'll be watching for this sign. And if you happen to be like me, I become instantly kind of anxious, hoping I don't miss the sign, because I am like, don't get distracted, Chris. 
You've got to follow these signs. You've got to make sure you're paying attention. And so thankfully, someone has went out and put these little signs in place to get me back on my planned trip and get me back to my destination. All I have to do is recognize them and follow them. And actually, to be honest with you, the dread that I initially felt when I came upon the detour is exchanged for relief when I see the signs that will lead me through the detour. I'm going to say that again. The dread I initially felt when I came upon the detour is exchanged for the relief I see when I see the signs that will lead me through the detour. When something ha- when you have a life detour, when you begin to see God laying out the signs for you, you are no longer focused on the detour. You are focused on the signs. You're focused on the way out. You're focused on the victory, right? So when we've been detoured in our life, we have to guard that we are continually looking for the signs that will help us find our way. To make sure that you don't miss where God is pointing you to, it's important not to get distracted and don't try to make it on your own. You know, see, I have one of those husbands that when we're on a detour, we'll assume there's a better way. <laughs> this can't be right. We got to go. That, that's, which, or, or, and then we're, I'd be like, really? You're going to abandon the signs? You know? How many of you men? would abandon the signs sometimes. <laughs> yes, there you go. You know, there's got to be a better way. It's got to be easier, right? Sometimes it's, there's not an easier way. You just have to go through it and rely on the signs. You have to watch for the signs. If you're going to navigate through a life detour, you must continually seek the Lord. It is not the time to turn your back. It is not the time to say, God, why did you do this? It is not the time to say, we can't go forward. It is the time to start seeking God. And so, Proverbs says, I love those who love me, and those who seek me, find me. God did not put you on this detour because he does not love you. He loves you. He loves you so much. If you seek him, you'll find him. Jeremiah 29 says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Don't get distracted by the detour itself, but take the time to focus on finding the direction that God has for you. As Saul finds himself detoured for his mission of persecuting Christ, we can only imagine the soul searching and seeking that he did. The Bible says for three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. And then it goes on to tell us in Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias and the Lord called to him in a vision, Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on straight street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. Even though Saul didn't understand his detour, he knew what to do. Even though he wasn't a follower of Christ, he knew what to do. Seek God, fast and pray. Can you imagine the prayers that that Saul had prayed? Think about it just for a minute. He had condoned the killing of Stephen. He was determined to believe that Christ was not the Messiah. He stood in the temple as a Pharisee and committed his life to ending the influence of Christ in the earth. To humble himself in prayer and fasting was remarkable. So why, when we face a life detour, do we choose to turn to everything but God? To try to figure it out on our own. If we as believers don't realize how important it is that we turn to God when a detour comes our way. 
The third thing we must do when we're navigating a life detour is to find joy in the journey. Let's look at what, and Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he could see again, and he got up and was baptized. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. As Saul comes to the end of his detour with a spirit-filled heart, renewed sight, and a brand new mission. His unexpected, unplanned detour had brought him to his purpose in Christ. He spent three years in Damascus. He spent those years sitting with the disciples that he was seeking to arrest before. He sat there listening and learning about his Lord Jesus. He shared his detour experience and declared Christ as the Messiah. If that road trip had never included the detour, the call of God on a life would have never been realized. We're not promised that we're not going to have detours in this life. As a matter of fact, we find that we should just count on them. Just expect them. They're going to happen. They're going to happen. Um, James 1 says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. It's hard to look at a detour and consider it pure joy. Some of the things I listed when I mentioned detours earlier, it's hard to look at those and say pure joy. So I suppose the joy doesn't come in the detour, but it comes in knowing that we have persevered through the detour. We've allowed these trials to exercise our faith and produce that never give up attitude. We look back on the detours that we've come our way, and we find that we've matured us. They made us more complete in our faith, and we lack nothing for the experience. Not all detours are bad. My oldest daughter was engaged three times. I'm glad we finally figured that one out. <laughs> Trust me, we got on the right path. <laughs> So, um, we ended up finding the perfect house at God's perfect time. And sometimes when you're on a DTR, you find the most beautiful little community you never existed. Or you might stumble against the best, uh, upon the best ice cream you've ever tasted in your life. Just because you went on a detour. Or you may end up writing two-thirds of the New Testament and reaching the world with the gospel. They're not all bad. But if you want to navigate a detour to the outcome God has designed and God has declared, you are going to have to trust the unfamiliar, watch for the signs, and find joy in the journey. Maybe today you're in a detour. You thought your plans were set and that you knew exactly where you were going to be. But here you are heading in a different direction. Maybe today you feel like your detour is never going to end. The pain is never going to go away. The hurt is just too much. Exercise your faith today. Start watching for the signs that God is sending because he knows where you are and he's going before you. His healing is at every turn. Maybe your detour is filled with fear and uncertainty. Let me tell you that God holds your future in the palm of his hands. 
He has designed you and created you. He has great plans for you. I want you to start looking to your future with hope and joy. Maybe you're like Saul today. Your detour is leading you to a Christ encounter. God may be saying, today is the day. I'm going to show up and change your life forever. If that's you, I encourage you to not say no. But to allow God to give you new sight and create in you new life. Take time to cry out to him today. Surrender your heart and life to him. Would you please join me in standing today? If you're not in the midst of a detour, trust me, one will come eventually. There just is no two ways around it. As you are on this road trip of life, you will eventually encounter a detour. The detours are not always bad. For the moment, that detour sign might send you into a panic. But sooner or later, you'll realize that that detour is leading you to a better place with God. That God has provided something and is going to provide something for you. Lord Jesus, we thank you today. We thank you, Lord, for the detours in our life, Lord. God, we thank you that sometimes, Lord, we just have to trust you and trust your word and to know, Lord Jesus, that you are leading us to a place of victory, Lord. God, today I just pray for each individual in this place and each individual watching online, Lord. God, today, if there's one person who's looking at a detour sign and wondering how they're going to navigate it, Lord, just remind them that you go before them, that your voice will whisper into their ear whether they go right or left, Lord. And God, remind them that joy will be there as they endure. God, I just pray today, Lord Jesus, that you will go with us, Lord, that you will continually be our guide, Lord. And as we face the situation in our world right now that feels like such a detour, Lord, let us not lose sight that detours end when you say they end. And God, we declare right now in this place, Lord, that you have all power and all authority. And God, we put it in, we commission it into your hands, Lord. God, we just pray, Heavenly Father, that you will continue to be with this people today, Lord. God, be with them, bless them, keep your hand upon them. As we leave this place today, Lord Jesus, let us leave knowing that we are on the path that leads to eternity. And wherever that path leads us, Lord, let us be found faithful. In Jesus' name, amen.